My name is Asia Samson, and today on Baptism Overland, we're looking at gear that you don't really need, but might possibly want. It has been a pretty exciting couple of weeks here in the Baptism Overland household. Every day I've been getting packages and we all know the excitement of getting packages. We look out the window, wait for Brown Santa. By the way, when I say Brown Santa, I mean UPS, all right? Not, never mind. So yesterday I was going through all the packages and I'm like, you know what, let's just do a video. Let me show you guys some of the new gear that I've gotten. Some that I bought myself, some that have been sent to me for review. Now, I will say that some of this stuff is not for your beginner overlander. If you're checking out this video because you want to get into overlanding, I would suggest watching videos about getting the basic stuff first. This is more for those that have been doing it for a while and are looking to upgrade some of their gear or trying to get some ideas of what gear to buy next. And with that out of the way, let's get to it. All right, first up are things that I actually bought with my own money. These things are not sponsored. I am not being paid to review them. So basically, I can say whatever the hell I want. All right, first up in that category, the PGY Tech Mantis Pod Pro. It's one of those things that I wish I would have bought a lot earlier than I did. This is like the king of all the selfie sticks, mini tripod gadgets gadgets that we have. In fact, this has replaced my Joby, my Gorilla Pods, my Spider Pods, all the things with the little bendy legs. I've always hated those things and don't know why a lot of people like them, but I can never bend them properly and they never stay straight. And yeah, this has basically replaced all of that. It's a little pricey. It's about $149, but personally, it's been like one of the best investments I've made. Now, I know that a lot of you don't run YouTube channels. You're not creating content that you're putting online, but I'm sure you're still capturing footage one way or the other, whether that's your kids or whether you're just having fun filming the trails or whatever. This would make a great addition to your kit just because of the things that it can do. This mount is an Arca Swiss type of mount. I switched pretty much all my gear to Arca Swiss because it's the most universal. Now this whole ball head unit is removable. All you got to do is loosen this little thing right here. It still won't come out. That's great for security because you have to take this little button and kind of push it down in order for this thing to come out. Now over on the side, you have this cold shoe mount, which I just think is genius. Having a cold shoe mount here allows me to put my microphone there. So then I just put the camera on here, plug the microphone up, and then when I need just the camera, I can just unplug the, ca the microphone, take the camera out and go, and then the microphone stays on here. On the other side is a button. This button allows you to unlock this thing. Once you unlock this, you can move the legs apart like that and now you have yourself your mini tripod. Now a lot of selfie sticks do this, it opens up into a little tripod, but what sold me about this unit, which is different than anybody else, and the reason why they call it Mantis is because they have this little tail that comes out right here. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to mount this vertically somewhere that's stable enough and then this hooks onto the back. So for example, I will roll down the Jeep window put this on the side of the window and then this end will go on the back of the window and it holds it in place and then you just basically loosen this up point it like this and now you have a camera that's pointing straight out and this thing is sitting vertically like I think that's just like an amazing feature I don't have to deploy a tripod anymore now the other transformation this thing can do check this out so you put that back in close the legs take out the ball mount and then right over here you have this little cover take that cover off this mount will now go inside here and there's also a plate in there to make sure that it doesn't come out so see there's a little plate that you have to push to get this thing out and now you basically have yourself a longer selfie stick if you needed to use it you can also make it 90 degrees so if you want to run and gun that way now you might also say well Asia I don't use cameras I usually you know vlog with my phone watch this inside the leg right here there's this little thing that you could pop out it opens like this you now have a phone mount and then that just kind of locks into place right over here like this in and now you have yourself something for your phone the PGY Tech Mantis Pod Pro again pretty expensive but damn was it a good investment all right, up next is the Blue Eddy EB55. This is a 537 watt hour capacity. 
power bank and this will basically power up anything that you needed to off-road the rule of thumb when it comes to power banks is about a dollar per watt hour so this being 537 watt hours it costs right around 500 bucks but we waited for this to go on sale for Father's Day and we were able to get it for about 450 or so starting off at the top you have a 15 watt wireless charger which I think is just the perfect place to put one of these this just makes it so convenient because you have this sitting in your tent you need to charge your phone then you can just pop it right on top and then come morning it'll be fully charged and you don't have to fish around for a charging cable or anything in the upper corner are your inputs this is how you charge this thing back up you can charge it up with AC plugging it up in your house DC plugging it up in your vehicle or you can use solar on the other side you have a 12 volt socket and then you also have two 12 volt inputs next to that over here you have your USBs you get four USB A's and one USB C now I know that a lot of our devices now are USB C so if you want that their next model after this should have more USB C's but I do know that the model above this the EB70 has a lot more USB C's on there but I kind of like that they have a lot of USB A's because a lot of my devices still are charging with USB A and then on the other side you have your plugs you have two that are grounded that has a three prong and then you have two at the bottom that does not now over on the back you have a light press it let it go and that'll be at its lower setting Click it one more time and it'll get a little bit brighter. Click it one more time and it starts to strobe on you. And then press it one last time to turn it off. Now inside this is a lithium ion battery which makes this a lot lighter than other units that do not have a lithium ion battery inside. There is still some weight to it. It's about 16.5 pounds. Good thing about lithium ion too is that you can bring this all the way down to zero and then charge it back up. If you have a battery bank that's not lithium ion, you don't want to go below like 50% because once you start to go below that you're gonna to start to degrade the battery but with lithium ion it allows you to drain it completely and then recharge it all the way back up speaking of batteries I was very surprised to open my mail to find one of these this is basically the battery to my zero breeze AC they sent this over to me after seeing my zero breeze review in one of my videos this is the unit this was sent to me by treadless a while ago and this thing is phenomenal. Like we didn't realize how much we would love it until we actually used it. Like it just blows really nice cold air inside the tent and makes it really cozy, especially when it's like 96 degrees outside. The only thing about this is that this is the most convenient when you're going to a site that actually has electrical because we want to keep this thing running especially when it's like 96 degrees outside you want to keep cold air blowing inside the tent well you need to have constant power to do that but on our last trip there wasn't any electrical so we had to find a way to power this we tried using the blue eddy that I just showed you the only issue is after about two hours it already drained the blue eddy down to like 40 percent so that wasn't going to be feasible because we use the Blue Eddy for other stuff as well and we don't want this using up all of its juice. But the plan is to use this to power this and then keep the Blue Eddy charging other stuff and then when we're hitting the trails and when the vehicle is actually on then I can plug up the Blue Eddy and this thing in the vehicle and get it charged back up again. I don't know yet how long this battery will power this thing. I just got this like a couple days ago. I just unboxed it so I'll be able to do a full test on this thing on our next trip and see how long this thing will actually last. Now the way this thing mounts is actually really cool so you basically just throw it right on top and it just you feel the grooves and you kind of slide it in. And then on the back, this cord here will basically, one end of this will plug into the input right there and then the output for the battery is right there. So this basically plugs up like this. Zero Breeze sent me one for a dual battery. So if you get another battery like this, then you can plug both of them at the same time. This has the three ports. So you have one that goes into the unit and then these two will go to the individual batteries. This is not cheap, all right? So the unit itself is about 700 bucks. The battery is also about 700 bucks. So you're looking at $1,400 already for this entire unit here. That's not pocket change. I couldn't have bought this with my own money because it's just a lot. But now that we have it, and I am thankful to the companies that sent these to me, like it has become so invaluable to us. I probably would save for one of these now that I know how well this thing really works. All right, up next, 
toiletry kits from Gravel Travel. Now I know, toiletry kits are not necessarily the most exciting gear to talk about, but we all have toiletry kits, so we should be talking about it a little bit more. The thing with me is that outside of overlanding, my job entails me to fly to places a lot. I have gone through my share of so many different kinds of toiletry kits. In the beginning, I was bringing whatever I use for air travel, to overlanding and it just seemed so like not fitting. I have this Tumi, this nice, really nice Tumi toiletry bag. I'm like, this is too nice to be overlanding with. I think I finally found a happy medium between the two. They sent me two. One that's in tan, one that's in black. This one's gonna be for my wife. If you see, we haven't even taken off all the paper yet. So really, really brand new. But let me walk you through why this is a great crossover toiletry bag for basically any of your adventures, whether you're traveling by air, car, or with your rigs. Over in the front, you have this wide pocket here. You can pretty much put whatever, quick access grab stuff, gum, lipstick, chapstick, whatever it is you wanna carry, you can put it all in here. Yes, I caught that. I do put my lipstick in here. Then on the side, this is not really a pocket, this is more of a garage to store the straps. Put them together like this and now you can basically hang it, hang it in the bathroom or if you're overlanding and you have one of those tents that you use for getting dressed and using the bathroom, you can hang this on a hook above and you'll have access to all of your toiletries. Now here's what's cool about this bag that you don't really see a lot with other toiletry bags. When you open this, zipper right here my god there's so many zippers right there you get a plastic pouch so air travel put all of your liquids in here this also has like a uh, adjustable strap and you can also you can hang this in the shower so if you need all your your liquids there you go so that makes it really convenient i put all my liquids in here put them back inside here it fits perfectly in there because it's made for that and then when you're going through TSA, you don't have to bust open your toiletry bag or carry a separate plastic bag for your toiletries. Just pull this out and let that run through the conveyor belt. What I also do though, is that when I'm going overlanding and camping, I don't need a lot of the stuff that's in here. I just need my essentials. So I will usually put that in here and take this overlanding and camping and leave this at home. And then when I'm ready to air travel again, then this can just fit right back inside and I am good to go. Now the way this opens is a clamshell style of opening. You open it like this. It has a lot of organization in here, which is a good and a bad thing. Like it's good to have the organization for all the different little stuff. But for me, sometimes I also like something that doesn't have too much organization. I can just use it as a dump ball and just put everything in there. Up to you how you want to use it. But right here you have a small pocket. This is good for like tweezers and files and nail clippers and whatever little small items you want to put in there. Over here you have a much smaller pocket and you can put your floss or whatever you want inside there. And then up here, this is where I usually put my toothbrush and my toothpaste that fits nicely in there. And then on this side, you have a bigger catch-all. This is usually where I'll put like lotion or whatever, or my loofah goes in there. Inside that, you have an even smaller pocket that you can access with a zipper as well for other little things. So like I said, this is one of those things where I, don't, I didn't probably need that inside, but you might like it. And then right above, you have a longer pocket here, and that's usually where I keep like a comb and my shaver and anything else that I need in here. And that's basically travel travel. This one is all black and then this one is tan with a white interior. Floor liners by Last Fit. I really like these guys, like they're good guys. They'll hit me up sometimes and be like, Asia, we have this new product, would you like to try it? And Unfortunately, sometimes I have to say no because I'm pretty much already set in that department. But there are other times when I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's give that a try. And they're a lighting company, but they've since started delving into all these other areas outside of lighting, that being floor liners. And for a while, they didn't have the JK ones yet for the Jeep, and they do now. So these are made for the Jeep JK. Listen, I'm a weather tech guy. I've been a weather tech guy forever. Every vehicle I've ever owned, I bought WeatherTech floor mats for them because they're just phenomenal. Well, my WeatherTech I've had for a really long time now and it's starting to kind of warp a little bit because of the heat. 
So I was ready to buy some new ones until last I said that they now have the JK versions and wanted to know if I'd like to try it. So I said, okay, cool. Send that over. We'll give it a try. If it doesn't work out, then I'll go get the WeatherTech ones. But knowing LastFit, they make some really high quality stuff. So I'm hoping that this will last me for the next how many years or so. All right, so here are the passenger and the driver side. First impressions, looks really good. I like the little tire tread pattern they got going on here along with some lines. Looks nice, looks clean, has their logo. They said that this is anti-slip. You know, like when you're coming in your vehicle and you're dragging mud and water, and, you know, you don't want it to be slippery. Like if you're hitting the gas pedal or the, the brake, you don't want your foot slipping. And they said that this gives you a really, really nice grip so that you're not, your foot's not slipping all over the place. Now, my only concern, just by looking at this, is that the walls of this are not as high as the ones that I have on the WeatherTech. The WeatherTech mats have walls that are much higher, so when you put them in the vehicle, it kind of comes around the sides as well to basically prevent more water, dirt, dust from getting in your vehicle and soaking the underneath. This does not have those kind of high walls, but who knows, maybe having it lower like this when we put it down will create a better seal between the walls and the bottom of the, the carpeting area that you have in your vehicle. Hopefully that's the case here. Hopefully this is enough to keep all that stuff out. Besides, having those high walls, that's the part that's starting to warp right now too. So this not having that, that just might be a little bit better. Now for the rear, you have this whole thing. Same kind of pattern, really nice. Here you do have the walls. Now they said that when it comes out of the packaging, it might look a bit like this. You just have to kind of fold it over the other way to get it to pop up. That's a little concerning if it's gonna start to droop on me. That's something I don't want. All right, let me interrupt real quick because I had ended this segment a little bit differently. I recorded that I don't know how they're gonna fit, we'll test them out, etc. But then right after that, I actually went and installed the floor mats and uh, yeah, let me just show you. Guys, they fit really, really well. Like I am super surprised that these floor mats mold to the footwell of the Jeep perfectly. Over there, you'll see that it's snug up against the carpet. And then on the other side, my worry was that it didn't have as high of a wall as the WeatherTech did that came up to like right here. But if you look, there's really no gap. Like this floor mat sticks to the sidewall of the Jeep so perfectly that you're not going to get a lot of dirt or water or mud or grime sneaking in underneath this thing. With the WeatherTech, it had the walls that were coming up, but after a while those walls started to warp like this and water and all that stuff would sneak in in between those gaps. But if you look over here, there's like no gap at all all here's a better view on the other side you'll see how it just really is snugged up against the carpet and then on this side there's like no gap between the wall of the jeep and the floor mats themselves then in the back those flaps that i thought were walls they're actually not walls they're meant to come over and then you can tuck them in underneath this groove and then tuck them in underneath there also so you can protect the entrance. The weather tech stopped like right here. So whenever my son would get in the vehicle, he's dragging mud and dirt over that carpet area right here. Well, the last fit ones, they cover that. So that allows you to kind of tuck it in right here. It molds perfectly to it. So now all this area is protected as well. Then in the middle console, you'll see that there's no gap there as well. Like it fits really perfectly right there. So you don't have dirt and dust and grime getting in between there as well. I'm actually very impressed, you guys. Super impressed by these last fit floor mats. And finally, the thing that I am the most excited about right now, solar. We'll, we'll get to that. These are Bouge RV's solar charge controllers. I still can't get over that name, man. Like, Bouge RV. So bougie. As you know, a while ago, they had sent me the Bouge RV fridge, and we have loved the fridge. We've been using it. They asked me what I wanted to do next, so I went on their website, found out that they do solar power stuff, and I've been wanting to get a solar setup 
for the Jeep for a while now. So they sent me the solar panel, which I'll show you in just a bit. And then they sent me this 10 app PWM negative ground solar charge controller. After doing my research though, I realized I didn't want to go with PWM. See with solar, you can choose between PWM and MPPTs. And MPPTs are just better, just a little bit more expensive. So I told Bujar V that I'm gonna order the MPPT made by a company called Victron because you know, a lot of people are used to Victron solar chargers and then they said to me well before you do that let me send you our solar charger and then you can use that and test it out and do whatever you want. I will say this is much bigger than the Victron that I actually bought it and had to return it because they sent me this. This thing is pretty massive. I mean this thing is huge. The Victron was probably like 75% this size. And it's pretty heavy so I'm gonna have to mount this somewhere that has the room for it I won't go into details about this yet because I'm gonna be doing a full DIY of my solar stuff so yeah we're gonna be installing this in a separate video along with their solar panel this is a 100 watt solar panel so I went with the one that's not flexible. I wanted to go with something like this because I could bolt this down. Whereas the, the ones that are flexible, you're gonna have to somewhat take them down. And I know that a lot of people run that, but I'm gonna try this. If I find that having something rigid like this is a little too clumsy to have on the Jeep and it's too heavy, then I'll switch to something that's flexible and we'll figure it out then. But right now, I do have crossbars on top of the rooftop tent that this can mount to. So we're gonna mount it to there and see how this thing performs along with their solar power charger. So please make sure you stick around and watch that video. But anyway, that's it. That's everything that I've gotten in the last couple of weeks. And I am super excited to start using some of this stuff. But like I said, this is not for your beginner overlander. Like if you are getting into overlanding, like a lot of this gear is, is not something that you're gonna need. And I will be the one guy to tell you that I love gear. I really, really love gear. But I'm also the kind of guy that will tell you that you don't need the gear to start going and go overlanding and camping. Like you can literally go to Walmart right now, get some basics and be on your way. But let's be real. I am beyond the basics already. I've been doing this for a while that there's been gear that's been replaced, been upgraded, got rid of, got new gear to replace those. Like I'm at that stage now where I'm thinking of all these other things that I have needed. Like that's what you should do when you're overlanding if you're a beginner. Go with the basics and then as you go more, you start to realize what it is that you are using and what you're not and what you would like to upgrade later on or what you're going to need later on. This stuff is not necessary, but it's good to have. Like at some point, if you're at that stage, these are the type of things that you might want to look into. But please do not fall into the idea that you have to have this kind of gear in order for you to start overlanding like right now. But anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you like the content. I'm, I'm really amped up about a lot of the stuff that I have in front of me. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time.